So now, in putting together this segment, we scoured the outer reaches of the universe to find the right person to join us to discuss the new Star Trek movie and the Star Trek series in general. But lo and behold, we discovered that there was a huge Star Trek nerd in close orbit to the Brian Lehrer Show and the WNYC studios. It is on the media's very own Brooke Gladstone, who, as you'll soon discover, is a total Trekkie. Hi, Brooke. Live long and prosper. <laughs> Kapla, as the Klingons say. <laughs> so just how big a Trekkie are you? I am a huge Trekkie. I am such a Trekkie that on the, uh, on the 40th anniversary a few years ago, uh, I actually <laughs> devoted 17 minutes of on the media to its cultural impact. And it had a lot on the media, actually. It pioneered all sorts of participatory modes that have gone on to this day. And uh, we'll be rerunning that. Of course, I saw the movie, and I was a follower of, uh, of all four series because most of us t Star Trek nerds didn't like the last one, Enterprise. What do you mean participatory <laughs> modes? Because in 1966, when Star Trek debuted, I mean, there, there was no web. There was no real interactivity between audience and film or TV that's, show. That's right. And it only lasted three years. How is it that it took took so many years for the next generation to come on, it's because the fans formed coalitions, because they started writing their own sequels, because they, they uh, created backstories, because they put the pressure on, because they used it as an organizing principle uh, to create not just uh, more Star Treks, but a philosophy. And we should point out, before we go to our full board of calls, that this movie is a prequel, so in theory there aren't any spoilers to reveal. Nevertheless, we will exercise, exercise discretion when talking about the new film. So, Brooke, give us your 30-second review. I thought it was an appropriate homage to a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the... Oh, there's my cell phone. I forgot that I had brought it in. Do you recognize this? Oh, my God. <laughs> Every time your husband or anyone else calls you, you hear that? <laughs> It's the theme from The Next Generation, my personal favorite. I'll switch it off. You just gave me an idea. They should invent the next generation of cell phones so that you can make the ringtone of your choice show up <laughs> on whoever you're calling's phone. How about that? That's excellent. Absolutely excellent. I thought it was a, a good film. In fact, I thought it was uh, incredibly clever because, and I won't talk about it, but they, uh, they organize the plot in such a way that they can take the series anywhere without respect to what we already know about Star Trek. I thought the casting was wonderful. And, uh, and of course, it was a J.J. Abrams well-paced thriller, which is uh, unusual for a Star Trek film, but I could accept that. So what have you learned about the real world from the Star Trek world? Dania in Brooklyn. Hi, Dania. You're on WNYC. Hey, Brian. How are you? Okay. So my parents were Star Trek junkies. In the 60s, so this is a comment about the original show. Uh -huh. uh, so as a biracial kid uh, growing up in the projects, poor, I, we saw that show, uh, and I learned that I could be part of making the future happen. Uh, watching Ohura and seeing Spock and seeing people that are very different working together to make a future, I found really empowering as a kid. That's something to take away from Star Trek, Brooke, and I'll bet Dana's not the only one. No, not at all. Many people have made that observation. Whoopi Goldberg, who went on to have a regular role in Star Trek The Next Generation, said it was important to her for the same reason. And Nichelle Nichols, who played Ohura, tells the story that at some point in the run she was sick of it and she wanted to leave, and Martin Luther King personally appealed to her to keep doing the show because she was the only black woman on TV who wasn't playing a maid. Wow. Dana, did you and your friends talk about that inspiration that you were getting from the show at the time? No, it was much later uh, before people started to realize it. Um, I think that we, it was, it was so cutting edge at the time. Um, I don't, uh, mm -hmm. people liked the show, but they didn't talk about it in that personal way. Right. It was more like a fantasy program, and I think even it probably didn't occur to me until much later the impact it was having. Dania, thanks for calling. Sure. And Jerry and Nutley, you're on WNYC. Hi, Jer Jerry. What, Hi, what did you learn you? about the real world from the Star Trek world? Well, I'm a political scientist, and the thing that appealed to me about the show was the positive message that we get past all the problems. If you remember, it was Cold War. We were all really – World War III was a real possibility with the Soviets and, and all this. And it was sort of – the backdrop was we're past that. These are the new adventures of the human race. Jerry, thank you. 
And so, uh, Brooke, what do you make of this note that listener Alvin just posted to our comments page? Post-racial? Ha. In the original Star Trek show, we had an inscrutable Asian techie nerd, an emotional Russian pro-Soviet stereotype, a black woman working the switchboard, a Scottish engineer, a stereotype from another age and place that's unfamiliar to many of us. But hey, when all the women are dressed in miniskirts, all is forgiven. <laughs> well, I think you can't take it entirely out of its time and its place. I mean, in some ways, it's very much like the uh, the comic book World War II groups where everybody was pulling together, but you had the kid from Brooklyn, you had the Italian, you had the black guy. Yeah, they were all fulfilling certain stereotypical uh, character roles, but the point here was that it didn't separate them. It brought them together, and they each brought something to it. I mean, Gene Roddenberry, who conceived the series, was originally a PR guy for the Los Angeles Police Department. He started out in television television writing scripts for Dragnet. I mean, the fact is, is he wasn't, you know, so much of a forward thinker that he could imagine a world without character stereotypes, but he could imagine a world where lots of different people could work together in peace.